catching up and doing things that I don't have the opportunity to do during the week. And the thought came to me that as I was visiting a church and enjoying it and listening to people and watching and observing, which I do a lot of observing. I notice things that most people don't notice, whether it be in scripture or whether it be in life, that I'm aware of things that are around me at all times. I'm conscious of details. I seek to watch for maybe God intervening in some particular peculiar way that I might see him in some unobserved means that people maybe would take for granted that they don't notice that, wow, the Lord's over there. <laughs> oh, check it out. God's moving in this. Oh, wow. Watch over here. Look, there's God. And it's almost like having fun with, you could say, CSI of, you know, the spiritual dimension, you know, but God brought to my mind, you know, when I was getting ready to sit down this morning about what will you, what will you be remembered for? What are you remembered for today? Will it be that someone will comment and say, oh, well, he's that person that, you know, man, every time I talk to him, they're talking about Jesus, you know, or, oh, well, that's that person that, you know, they were this great football star, and then they fell from grace, so to speak, or they fell from fame and fortune because they did this or did that, or that's that politician that, you know, was so big and powerful, and then one incident, and bam, they fell down, or hey, that's that nobody that, you know, became somebody because who was in him was greater than what he was. Or some other thing. But what will you be remembered for? Will people look at you and say, and I don't mean because will there be enough evidence, but just, you know, they, they were Christian. You know, they were pretty gentle or meek. They were glowing. They were happy. They were joyful. Or that was one bitter person. That, that may have been a Christian, but it's not one I'd want to be. You know, because a lot of times things follow you. So how will you be remembered? I know that there's one famous ministry that's very big on attacking other ministries. And the person should be, you know, a great and have his life go down as a great minister. When in reality, he's going after all the bigger names that were greater than him and seems to be attacking them in, in regular ways. And, how sad it would be that at the end of your ministry, after spending so much time with possibly right on teaching and doctrine, that you choose to become bitter and leave behind a bad taste in someone's mouth. Today, what will you be remembered for? When someone you've met only for the first time and the last time comes into contact with you, will the last thing they remember you as be bitter or Jesus? Or you've got a big nose? Or you smiled a lot? Or that you helped them with a kind word in a gentle way? That you helped them on their way? Or did you do something to devastate them, wipe them out? Did you cut them off in the parking lot and they'll remember you forever? What will be today what people might say they remember you as? What will you be remembered for? In daily life, none of us live to himself, and no man dies to himself. Whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Let no man seek his own, <clears throat> but every man another's wealth. You were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what shall I choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The reality of God taking care of us, as far as the requirements of the law are concerned, is obvious. We aren't 
technically condemned by the law anymore because we're dead to our flesh if we are in fact dead but if we're not dead to our flesh then the law convicts us if we're in the flesh but if we're born again of the spirit then guess what we're in a different kingdom we're in a different set of rules we're we're living unto god god owns us god possesses us god wants us to develop the graces that we might share his love which is greater than the law which shares his conviction or his direction so if we have love then we're able to reach out to other people and to encourage them to grow in what they are learning about god as opposed to just seeking our own way i'd hate to think that our legacy was one of self-service as opposed to serving others because jesus said if you want to be great in his kingdom become a servant of all god gave solomon largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore behold a greater than solomon is here the prince of peace scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners Jesus died for us who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The unsearchable riches of Jesus, of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. In other words, if you have Jesus, you have it all. There's a lot that's written of if you do this, do that, do whatever, you know, and you find this, find that, find whatever. But the bottom line comes to be if you don't got Jesus, you don't got God. So you got to get God in order to get saved, which means that you got to get Jesus because otherwise you don't get it along the way. It's not a question of being religious and then finding righteousness and then going on then all of a sudden at the last minute add Jesus. No, the reality is, you know, you develop a personal relationship with Jesus himself, participating with you or sharing with you his word, talking to you, instructing you, encouraging you, helping you, and growing inside you as he gives you his spirit to become more like him. Then you discover that it's always been a relationship, a communication part, that you have to have some type of connection with Jesus. Because if you don't, you aren't saved. It's pretty simple, really, is that it means that you find in some way in your day in how you approach it and how you deal with it a connection with God. Now, I don't know what your connection is like. Me, I just talk to God and God talks to me and I personally think you can't get him to shut up, but <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> I'm just listening, so I'm hearing a lot. <laughs> And it's not always like happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, you need to do something about yourself. <laughs> so, somehow today, restore whatever it is that you've been maybe missing, you know, in your relationship with Jesus. You know, maybe take a moment or two to talk to him again, you know, and kind of like make sure you know what you're talking about. So you go on with what he's wanting you to know about himself and his father. Because you might discover... You might have eh, kind of stepped aside, you know, and went off on your own tangent for a while. But that's okay, too, because God wants to bring you back to himself to show you what he would have you to do today as you walk with him, as you talk with him, as you learn to be with him, because you will be there for eternity. Talk to Jesus today.